Hey guys, thank you for joining me again as we walk through this very, very practical book of the book of James. We've been talking about trials over the past few weeks, just the past couple of weeks, just about how that they do they do come into our lives and that we're all either in one, we just got through with one, we're headed into one, but how God wants to use them if we would allow him just to be Jesus in and through us because they all they all have a purpose. All right, we're going to move down to the next next verse. We're going to start with verse 5. And this one, remember the umbrella is, let Jesus be Jesus in me. Uh, this one is, let Jesus be Jesus in my asking. In the next few verses, he talks about asking for wisdom. Now, how many times do I not have the wisdom that I need to make a decision simply because I have not asked the God of all wisdom to give it to me. You know, and again, James is very, very practical. He's direct. He's to the point. And he says in verse 5 of chapter 1, this is what he says. He says, But if any, any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all of his ways. You know, uh, James makes a couple of statements here, but it's also a promise here. It's a promise that if I will ask God for wisdom, that God will give me wisdom. And we all need wisdom. Right, we need godly wisdom to survive. We need godly wisdom to make decisions, to lead our families, to lead our churches. You know, we need the wisdom of God. But sometimes I think that we get so busy and so caught up. And let me say, let me rephrase that. I get so busy and so caught up with life that sometimes I fail to ask. All right, so let's go and let's just take a look at this passage. Probably spend a couple of weeks here. All right. It says that if any man lacks wisdom, so it, what do I need to do? All right. I need to ask. All right. So let Jesus be Jesus in my asking. All right. So I need to ask God for wisdom. So what's wisdom? All right. When you really think about the word wisdom, what is it? When you look at the book of Proverbs, all right, the Prover Proverbs is a book of wisdom. And basically, basically what the book, book of Proverbs does is it, it paints a person that, that lives out the truth of God's wisdom in their life, that receives it and lives it out. And then it paints a picture of a person that, that rejects that wisdom and refuses to live it out. And it said that, says that person is a, is a fool, is what Proverbs says. So we, we're foolish not to ask God for wisdom, and we're foolish not to live it out. But what is wisdom? Wisdom comes from a word that means the best possible plan. It's the ability to make sound judgment all right, uh, in respect to divine things. It, it's deep insight and deep understanding that can only come from God. And actually, to me, this is the best definition of wisdom I've ever heard. Is being able to take the truth of God's word and apply it to my everyday life. And brother, listen to me. I need that. And you do too. We need to be able to take the truth of God's word and then take it and apply it to my everyday circumstances and my everyday situations in life. Uh, the situations and circumstances in my own life, in the life of my family, at, at at my workplace, at job, in dealing with other people. We need the wisdom of God. We need the best possible plan. Not just a plan, but the best possible plan that's based on the truth of the Word of God, and we need be, to be able to, to, live, to live that out. And, and James says, look, if you lack that, and we all do, if we lack wisdom, what do I do? I need to ask God for it. All right? I need to simply come before him and say, God, look, 
I've got this situation and circumstance. I don't know what to do. I need your wisdom. Now, remember, it's taking God's word. So I got to spend some time in the word. As I spend time in God's word, God reveals to me the truth of his word. I take that truth. I apply it to my everyday situation and circumstances in my life. And I live out the truth of God's word. Now, for me to see the truth and understand the truth and not apply it, to my circumstances and situation, it is foolish. It's foolish. So if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask, let him ask of God who gives generously. You see, God does not withhold his wisdom from us if we ask him for it. It says in this text, James says he will give it to me generously, abundantly. He will give me the wisdom that I need. And when I ask him, he gives it without reproach. He's not going to make fun of me for asking him for his for his wisdom. He's not going to speak bad of me. He's not going to speak. He's not going to think bad of me if I ask him for wisdom. You see, one of the keys to living out this life is understanding how desperately I need Jesus and how desperately I need the truth of his word, how desperately I need his presence in my life through the person of the Holy Spirit. So if I lack wisdom, why? Could it be that I'm not asking? Or could it be that he's given it to me? It's not what I wanted. And so therefore, I'm not applying it to my life. You know, don't be foolish. Let's ask God for wisdom who gives it to us generously and without reproach. Let's take that God-given wisdom. Let's apply it to our everyday life and let's live out the wisdom of God. Let's let Jesus be Jesus in our asking. I hope you have a blessed day and let Jesus be Jesus in you today. Thank you so much for watching Complete in Christ as we strive to teach you about the Christ life. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and may you have a blessed day walking with Jesus.